Uh, well, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Um, may I welcome uh, Eric Pickles, Secretary of State for Communities and Local Government. Uh, and I think the subject of today's session touches on uh, your patch uh, in various ways, which uh, will probably become apparent uh, during the course of uh, the next couple of discussions. Um, this is a, a panel discussion, this next uh, session. Let me introduce uh, who we've got. Uh, on my far right, Martin Knight, uh, Chief Operating Officer of Imperial College, uh, who are actively engaged in the question of digital development and its relationship to education uh, in this uh, area. Uh, on my immediate right, Chris Kane, who's Head of Workplace at the BBC and therefore has a uh, burdensome responsibility for everything from uh, relocations to energy management and everything else, else associated uh, with the BBC's property portfolio. Uh, on my immediate left, uh, Stephen Greenhouge, Councillor Stephen Greenhouge, leader of Hammersmith and Fulham Council, uh, which has been, I think, making great strides uh, in the area of uh, development uh, with uh, a human face on the one hand, trying to find that, that bridging that gap which has come up a bit today uh, between uh, local needs and desires, borough needs and desires uh, and wider long-term prospects for uh, West London. Uh, and on my far left, Dan Sujic, uh, author, journalist, critic um, and director of the Design Museum, uh, which most of you will know is going to take up a new home uh, on the west side of town uh, in the former Commonwealth Institute uh, building, which is the subject of a redevelopment which Rainier de Graaf uh, briefly uh, mentioned this morning. I'm going to ask uh, Councillor Stephen Greenhouse to kick us off um, just with some overall observations about this side of London uh, and the big uh, opportunities and challenges that it faces. Stephen. Well, I was asked by Eric to say was whether, whether there's any big stuff going on in Hammersmith and Fulham, and I think we've got some of the most exciting uh, development opportunities in the next few years. And just a couple of slides, because I know it's mainly a, a panel discussion. Um, there are effectively three major opportunity areas. That's not to say there's going to be other regeneration, particularly around Fulham Riverside, but Earls Court, West Kensington, um, is one where the landholding interests are fairly clear. Um, about 72 acres, a third owned by the borough, a third owned by Transport for London, and a third by Capco, um, who in the, uh, bought the Earls Court and Olympia complex. Um, and obviously we're here in White City, which is a phenomenal opportunity as well. Uh, and lastly, um, less talked about, but I think also very exciting, is the Old Oak opportunity. Uh, and I thought I'd rattle through what that might mean for this borough. And I think there's no borough with as many opportunity areas in London. And certainly um, the Earl's Court is the only new opportunity area in the, in the new London plan. With regard to Earl's Court and West Kensington, um, it's fascinating. Um, Terry Farrell took me through why this is essentially an urban uh, backwater. Um, the story about how industry was close to the now dead river. Um, public housing was reprovided on some of the site, but it's essentially a dead end site, which is you know kind of cut off from the rest of the borough and also its neighbours, uh, Kensington, Chelsea. And Terry Farrell has this idea, um, and he's won the um, project to master plan the area for what he calls four urban villages and a high street, uh, looking for an east-west village, village, and then a new Broadway going north-south. <coughs> but essentially um, uh, four villages around the tube station. So we have West Kensington, this will be West Kensington Village. Um, we've got Earls Court Village down here. This could potentially be the North End Market Village um, and, um, uh, and also West Brompton. So uh, that is a particularly exciting project and one that hopefully we can uh, work to get a plan in the next couple of years. Um, in numbers, massive opportunities for both new homes and new jobs. So potentially 6,000 new homes, 10,000 jobs. Opportunities, there are obviously people who live on the two estates on the site, they'd all be provided with a brand new home, same or better, within that, uh, that, that new development. Opportunities to improve the r r public realm and also the connectivity between us and the Royal Borough of Kensington and Chelsea. Sometimes I wonder whether they want connectivity with a neighbouring borough. I remember one of the deputy leader of Kensington Chelsea says, oh, we couldn't possibly join with uh, Hammersmith and Fulham, that's where our cleaners live. But um, we're doing our best to create a more, uh, um, a, 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 you know, more, more opportunities to cross into the um, Imperial Kingdom. 
Um, we move on to White, White City. Um, White City is fascinating, and I hope to show Eric a picture, because I know you've got a very, very good view of the opportunity area here, but landholding <coughs> interests are more complex. But we've seen the beginnings of that with Westfield. They have plans to obviously look at expanding their retail offer to a certain extent. They bought some land just north of uh, the new Westfield Centre. Queen's Park Rangers, interested in securing the long-term future in the borough, potentially a larger say, stadium. We know that there's other landholding interests as well, and um, the, this idea of a creative media hub, but allied with Martin here from Imperial, looking at a lung for Imperial College from the <coughs> South Kensington cam campus, and also um, having bought some of the land towards the top of the opportunity area. I think it's a fascinating one, but it's a bit like a Rubik's Cube, getting everyone to, to sing off the same hymn sheet, and I, I think this is probably our second opportunity area in terms of its immediacy of being able to do, to do something, although bits of it will build out uh, very soon. Again, we think that will generate a huge number of jobs, um, up to uh, 5,000 new homes, opportunities for bi biotech, high-tech, um, and this creative media uh, offer, uh, and also to reinvigorate Shepherd's Bush Town Centre. Last one's Old Oak, currently railway sidings. <coughs> But if we see Crossrail happen and it isn't, it isn't cancelled, if we can deliver on high-speed rail with a, it's certainly an interchange hub at Old Oak, massive opportunities for regeneration at Old Oak Common Sidings. I've been lobbying the new government about the opportunity for Old Oak. I think it's a phenomenal one that could uh, transform the very north of the borough and I think have a huge impact and advantages also for the White City opportunity area. <coughs> Uh, and again, um, Old Oak, massive number of uh, new homes, up to 10,000, 5,000 jobs. So if we aggregate the opportunities in Hammersmith and Fulham, um, many, many inner London boroughs have very few opportunities for big development. We have three, 20,000 new homes, up to 25,000 new jobs, the opportunity to create modern housing, obviously market housing paying for a lot of this but <laughs> subsidizing for middle income and low income people as well as providing good safety net housing as well genuine mixed communities and transforming the urban grain of the borough I mean, it's no wonder that i want to do this job in hammersmith and fulham because i think this definitely gives us the opportunity to deliver what we call the borough of opportunity thank you very much I'm going to ask each of the other panellists to make um, a couple of observations that they think are, are, are relevant uh, to this question of uh, how we <coughs> promote and encourage uh, London as a centre for creative industries uh, or enhance its existing status uh, or make any observations about what they feel are the significant challenges or indeed barriers uh, to getting things done, perhaps uh, particularly uh, in this part of London where the opportunities are immense. Um, Chris, can I start with you because uh, you've been working at this uh, longer than most. Uh, how are you feeling about it currently? Uh, very positively. I think today is the, as we said earlier this morning, the start of a, a different type of discussion because to bring forward large-scale urban regeneration of the type envisaged for this part of the world, we really need to think about regeneration in a much wider sense rather than a, a pure property deal. As we as we heard earlier, you know, we've got to make space for everybody, those who can afford um, rents that are commercially viable and those that can't. We've got to think about the wider community aspect of all of this, and we can think m much more about building and design. It has its part, but we need to think about place-making and community-making. And that, for me, is, is what um, you know, the BBC has learned over its 10 years of changing itself in terms of its journey from the wrong side of the tracks at Pacific Key to the 1,000 new jobs we brought there within spitting distance of Govan to our latest and grandest experiment of working with the public bodies in Salford and the creation of the city, 2,500 jobs being the catalyst for 15,000 jobs. So it got us thinking about West 12 over the last <laughs> few years, given that Television Centre celebrates its 50th anniversary on the 30th of June it served an age, a broadcasting age. We're now in the digital age. We now need to adopt, adjust, to open up, to engage more with our audiences and with our communities and, and fulfill our public purposes. So how can we do this differently? 